things I want to point out to you guys today are the different um, types of distractions while driving and um, the importance of not texting while driving. So a couple of the activities that would be considered um, a distraction, distraction while driving would be eating and drinking. And um, so I've done this, a lot of people do it, getting from point A to point B in a hurry and they don't have time to eat, so they're just going to eat while they're driving. And it's a huge distraction. Uh, another, another distraction is talking to a passenger. Uh, sometimes you get carried away or talking to somebody in the car and you miss an exit or you lose uh, track of where you're going. Um, applying makeup or grooming in the car. I've seen a lot of people doing it, like in front of me or next to me. Um, I've done it myself. And uh, it is another huge distraction. Um, looking for directions while driving. A lot of us uh, may use GPS systems or our phones or uh, a piece of paper with directions printed out on them and uh, helps us find where we're going. It only takes a second for you to look down at that piece of paper and it could be fatal. So um, if you guys have like a handheld device that um, that may like guide you or you know speak to you like a um, automated or automatic uh, GPS system. And then uh, changing the music. A lot of people play with their iPods or you know change change stations on their radio, and that itself is a huge distraction. Uh, the second point that I wanted to make is the danger of texting and driving. A lot of people, when they hear uh, texting and driving, they think, oh yeah, we've heard it, we've heard it, uh, same old, same old, and uh, you know, we know it's not good, we know it's bad, we know it can be fatal. Um, I personally, like, I used to think like that until I, like, I didn't really have, like, it wasn't a really bad accident, but I actually rear-ended somebody at a red light because I was on my phone. And <laughs> so, uh, I looked down and I thought the person in front of me, like, I saw the light turn green, so I glanced and, you know, I thought it was okay on my phone. I glanced at the light and I hit the gas and the person in front of me, like, started to go, but the person in front of them didn't, so they had to hit their brakes. So I hit the gas while the person in front of me hit their brakes and I rear-ended them. So it's pretty bad on my part. The guy uh, was definitely an eye opener for me, and uh, he let me go. You know, it was more damage, cost me a lot of money to get my gun fixed, but uh, he let me go. He didn't <coughs> switch information, or I didn't have to report it to my insurance. So that was definitely an eye opener for me. And to think that it could have been ten times worse than it was, it really like changed the way that I uh, use my phone in the car, even at a red light. And a lot of people think that they're they're in full control and that they can safely text and drive or use, use their phone. And I thought I was in full control at red light, and you're not. So you have to really stay focused and not even take your eyes off for like two seconds. Um, looking at some of the stuff on the with this topic, after seeing some of the images and photos, like it's it has a huge impact on the way that you view. Um, texting and driving or anything else for that matter. Uh, so there's just a couple facts according to stoptext.rex.org. 49% um, of people under the age of 35 send and receive text messages while driving. So those people are people that automatically think that they're in full control and that nothing's going to happen to them and um, that they can multitask. 77% of adults are confident that they can send safely text and drive. So, um, like I said, it only takes like five seconds to get your, your eyes off the road. And, uh, and uh, there's several things that you can do to prevent these distractions. Uh, one, uh, if for girls, if you're going your purse, that's what I started doing after that happened to me. Uh, silence your phone, put it in your back pocket so that you're not tempted to look at it or um, just turn your phone off in general. There's nothing like that important that can't wait, you know, until you aren't driving to check your phone. So um, those are just a few preventions that um, you can do to prevent uh, 
fatalities. So in conclusion, I hope that I was able to provide you guys with a better understanding of the importance of uh, not being distracted while driving. Carolina, what did you think of the speech? Not here? Hey, well, can I plug in that one? Well, no, you already got this one. You're, you're covered later. I'm oh, sorry. Well, you know what? I'm not sure. Crystal, did you come in? All right, Greg, why don't you drop down in here? Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was very, it was nice. Um, I think it was more informative than choice, but I mean, other than that, um, I think everything was well, we were very well spoken, didn't sound nervous. Um, all the information was legit, you know, we decided to support this friendly, you know, everything was pretty much tough, you know, other than it not just really being like percent but like I said, it was still good, but we were here to do it with Good job. Good plus, enjoy your service, so thank you. <laughs> I hope that was loud enough for the camera to pick up on. Uh, all right, l l the audience survey is an attention device. It's never been my favorite. It continues not to be my favorite, and it doesn't always work out as well as you might, which I think was illustrated with the answers and responses that you got here because uh, it undercuts some of the suspense that you're trying to build up with that whole first section. Uh, I think you need a stronger layout of what the content is going to be. It sounds, when you present it, it sounds... Uh, very limited. Uh, I, I know what the subject area is, but I don't know what you're trying to say about it and what you're going to try and convince us of, what you're going to persuade us of. Uh, I understand what Greg was saying. It does sound like it might be an informative at the beginning. Uh, there are really two main points. The first point talks about all the other potential distractions. Uh, but you've, here's the problem with that. You don't have any examples that give us an emotional connection to this. You don't have any statistics that tell about what the risks are there. You don't have any of that background information. You get a little bit more of that on the issue about the phone and the texting when you talk about how quickly uh, an accident can happen, what the stopping distances might be, any of those kinds of things. We need some information on that first point there. Uh, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot of information about distracted driving and the frequency with which it occurs, the potential danger it presents that is not unique to texting that I think you could put into the speech in that first section and make it uh, feel a lot uh, stronger. And I, I really am missing some illustration that's going to give us an emotional connection to it. Now in the second section, you've got the personal example. That does give you a little bit of ethos and uh, makes it more solid, but I'm not sure that it's going to have either the fear appeal or the uh, emotional appeal that some other story might have. Um, and I think that there are lots of those uh, stories out there that could pull us in and give us a more compelling reason to behave the way that you're talking about. And I think that's really part of what you need to do at the beginning of the speech is set up that there's a, you know, there are behaviors that we need to change in this situation and circumstance. That uh, we do need to shut the phone off when we're driving. We do need to refrain from engaging in uh, certain kinds of behaviors. I know that they call it a drive-through window and that people are going to be eating while they're driving. You know, I mean, that's the whole point there. But if you've got that story about the person who you know, uh, ran into somebody and choked to death on their hamburger you know, because they were, you know, they hit somebody or they got sideswiped because they weren't paying enough attention, then at least it would be a little bit more compelling. On the other hand, the presentation stuff I think is really solid. You do a nice job talking to the audience. Uh, you, uh, you're not dependent on 